So I'm pretty excited. I just got a new Bitcoin miner in. It's the most powerful Bitcoin miner I've ever gotten. Reporting to you live. Actually, it's recorded. But with Tails, our CMO, our Chief Bitcoin Officer. But here's the deal, right? I used to mine Bitcoin with Antminer S9, right? 13.5 terahash a second. Now I've got a new Bitcoin mining rig. It's an ASIC miner. It's purposeful. It's a custom computer. All it does is my Bitcoin. It mines at over 100 terahash a second. That's crazy. And I don't even have the most powerful Bitcoin miner out right now. I have the S19, but it's the pro version. It's very powerful and it's pretty efficient. But something terrible has happened. Something like, something terrible has happened. Uh, and I'm like laughing, but I'm laughing at my own misery. Because, and I'm not talking about the fact there is a more efficient miner out there, the Ant Miner S19 XP, because we gotta keep the name confusing. But I'll break that down in today's video. My name is Voss, here on the Voss Coin YouTube channel. Let's dig into it. I've got some interesting data to unpack with you here today. I will preface this that I'm assuming you just understand the basics of crypto, Bitcoin, that you know how to set up your miner, you've got electricity set up, right? So crash course, right? You get the miner, you have electricity, you need to make sure that you have 240 volts, right? Or 208 volt, 200 plus volt, right? Watch our electricity guide to understand the basics of that because the amp miners in this generation, the S19s, they have an integrated power supply. You look at the side of it, and well, there it is. You plug cables in, if you're using a PDU, you're using two C13, C14 cables. They look like this. You plug ethernet in, you get that internal IP address from your router or use an IP scanner or something like that. And uh, you're off to the races. I've done all that. I got the IP address, username, password, or root, root. You can save it if you want. Ideally you should change it. I'm logged in. We see my average total hash right here at almost 112 terahash a second. It actually reads as 111, 100,000 gigahash a second. 1,000 gigahash a second is one terahash to keep it simple. This miner's had an uptime for about five days. Uh, so the issue isn't exactly the miner itself. I'll, I'll, I'll break down exactly what's going on with here and, and why it's terrifying and why I'm getting a little nervous of building out my Bitcoin mining farm, right? But before that, let's talk about some good news, like green bars or circles and normal, 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 normal. Three hash boards in here. Hash board looks like this. It's basically the engine to your miner and you have three engines. Maybe it's more like three cylinders, right? 114 chips on each of them and they're all looking good. And there's a cool chip state thing now that you blow it up and you can see all of your different ASIC chips and you'd be like, you know, 73, what's wrong with you? Why are you red? What, what, what happened? But basically all systems green, all systems go, you know, your uh, Gundam is ready for launch. If you haven't watched Iron Blooded Orphans, the best anime of all time, I, I highly recommend it. It's even on Netflix now. It's easier than ever to watch. You can also watch it for free on YouTube. And no, they didn't pay me to say that. Jeez, I'm done, moving on. So we're in the settings and set it up right here, right? Pool, miner name, password, you mine wherever you want. I'm using via BTC. If you use my link down in the video description below, you get 50% off your mining fees. My earnings there are good and the fees are reduced. What's not to like? You do have to make an account. So you sign up my username, dot worker name, passwords optional, one, two, three, you click save and you're off to the races. Click on the dashboard, make sure your information's in there, and, and that's the basics of getting started. The uh, last 24 hours, $18 million have been emitted on Bitcoin. So that's a lot of money. Looking at hash price, which is a term that is basically the expected value of one terahash a second of hashing power per day. It's how much your miner's supposed to earn, right? Hash price is pretty much at an all-time low. It technically hit an all-time low couple weeks ago uh, but I think it's gonna be on track to hit a new all-time low we look at the last year it's crashing down about a year ago the miner I'm reviewing would cost ten thousand dollars now you can get it for a couple thousand dollars three thousand dollars at most depending on the exact model you buy so it's just just absolutely crazy and the next 
difficulty adjustment, Bitcoin adjusts the difficulty every two weeks. It's on track to be plus 4% right now. And let me just drive it home, okay, that the difficulty just skyrocketed, all right? So when we blow up the stats here, we look at the difficulty and it just went up 14%. And it's not like Bitcoin surging. It's been trading sideways half the year, okay? But mining farms lag behind. So, you know, so last year price was good, but these mining farms quickly realize it takes like a year to build out your farm if things go decent. Sure, some smaller ops, more agile stuff can get up quicker, but yeah, and there's still people expanding, spending millions and millions of dollars building bigger, more and new Bitcoin mining farms, even though the amount of Bitcoin held in reserve by Bitcoin miners just hit the lowest point since 2010. Yeah, Bitcoin mining is literally more difficult than it has ever been. In about a week, it will become more difficult than it's ever been again. Okay, it's going up 4%, which means in a month, Bitcoin mining will basically become 18% more difficult. So pretty much from when I got this miner over the next month, it became almost 20% harder to mine a Bitcoin, which means I'm mining that much less. And this is Bitcoin's way to adjust that basically the proper amount of Bitcoin is emitted in its life, in its uh, life cycle, block times are correct. And uh, it, it's, it's, it's very cool, right? But it's very terrifying to watch it skyrocket as a miner. Really, all of the metrics point to that Bitcoin should be going down in mining difficulty because Bitcoin is trading sideways and it's just relatively low. At 12 cent per kilowatt hour, there's only one miner in the green. Major mining farms have much better electricity rates. I'm operating on a residential electric rate. So <laughs> this ain't the story for your boy. Not in the slightest. We're building out solar panels, you know, eventually to combat this issue, but wow. Wow. I will say, don't let that entirely discourage you. And it's not just because your boy has a discount code affiliate link to Coin Mining Central who helped us get our Bitcoin miner. Because I don't know if you know this, but if you go shop at Bitmain, you've got a KYC, you have to deal with import duties and charges and things like that. It can be a very bad, just rough time. And they're really heavily pushing their hydro miners, their they're basically shipping container ant space and their s19 xps their latest generation of bitcoin miners so this generation of the s19 pro it's much cheaper to get into but what's really cool is when you grab a miner that has shipment from within the usa if you're from within the usa but you can still buy a usa miner and be outside the usa just to be very clear on that but like here's an example this one's in the usa so there's nothing shady going on here like you're not importing the miners, so you don't have to pay import prices on it. What they're doing here, I'm assuming, is they're importing in bulk, right? And dealing with a much more fair, like, import duty and charge. And then that gets reflected in the price slightly, but basically it's better for you, the, the end consumer, and me as well, plus fast shipping times. So if you want to buy one, support the channel, support those who support the channel, and grab one from there. In the last 24 hours, I've earned this much Bitcoin. You look at the 10 minute mining, pretty good stabi stability. Just basically two awkwardly high reject rates down there. We look at the hour by hour, couple, you know, high reject rates. I mean, losing 10% of your work is, it's not good. <laughs> That's, you lose that much work, your boss is like, yo, <laughs> where's the other 10%, dude? We look at the daily. I had a different S19 hooked up, which is this performance, and now I've switched to a more powerful Bitcoin miner as I slowly migrate my gear to our new mining farm. Again, specifically, this is the S19 Pro. We look at the one day average. It's averaging over 110 terahash a second, which is really cool. It's almost averaging 112 terahash a second. So that's a nice little boost of performance in a time where things are getting a little tough. So looking at my earnings down here, we can say this is probably the average, you know, roughly of my recent earnings with this miner. Specifically, we look at the days with the increased uh, hash rate. And so I'll bump it up or I'll pull it up on CoinGecko. Obviously, you boys got to collect this candy just in case CoinGecko ever does anything crazy. And now we go over to Bitcoin. 
BTC to USD, that translates to $7.27 per day. But unfortunately, at a 12 cent per kilowatt hour electric rate, I'm projected to actually lose $1.59 a day paying the electric bill. At 12 cents per kilowatt hour, this thing's supposed to burn $9.36. My projected income is $7.76. So I'm, I'm pretty close to the projected uh, earnings there. But yeah, I mean, at a, at a residential rate, this doesn't make sense. Bitcoin mining is getting harder and harder and it's getting further and further away from decentralization and one CPU, one vote. I will say though, right, today underwater a little bit, speak to a professional advisor you can operate um you know if you can operate you know your bitcoin mining as a business you expense your le electricity you hoard your bitcoin and, and pay your electric electricity bill out of a stockpile you know whatever else is numerous ways to go about it but let's say bitcoin goes up to sixty thousand dollars which it's traded a higher than that before and we all dream and believe that it will hit a new all-time high maybe one hundred thousand dollars uh down the road but let's just take a 3x, right? So I'm dealing with pretty much $22. So $22 minus my $9 electricity bill, let's even just bump it up to 10, right? So if it 3x's, then I'm pulling $12 per day per mining rig. And we take $12 per day. And you may be thinking like, wow, this dude is really high on hopium. You wouldn't be lying, you know? But $12 a day over a year more than pay off this mining rig. And it also gives me pretty much another $1,000. That $1,000 will pretty much cover the electricity. So if we're spending $7.50 a day in electricity over the next year, that comes out. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> okay. All right, I lied. I lied. My, my offhand math uh, there was, was actually pretty low. Uh, that's not going to cover the electric bill. Uh, but we will make a little bit of cash. So I'll be honest. We we, we really going to need 100000 this year, boys. <laughs> Next time we hit an all-time high. Jeez. Man, times be tough for the boy. And don't just forget that we're going up 4%. It's gonna, you're going to earn that much less with the next difficulty adjustment. Yeah, I mean, there's no sugarcoating it. You know, I keep it real as always and bring you real-world real mining profitability and reviews on this stuff. Uh, Bitcoin mining is getting harder and harder to justify as an individual, as a small-time miner. And a lot of people were all happy and cheering and rejoicing. We had these publicly traded Bitcoin mining farms and their stocks and all that bullshit. But congratulations, like now you have major investors, major competition, and just the industrialization of Bitcoin mining. I don't think it's decentralized. I don't think it's, you know, good grassroots marketing to help, you know, you mine Bitcoin, you mine Bitcoin, you mine Bitcoin, get involved, get exposure, none of that. Uh, so, yeah, basically situation sucks. This is the deal with this. I know from a 12 cent per kilowatt hour, it doesn't make too much sense. But, you know, you go, you get your cost down to say 10 cents per kilowatt hour. But let's go 9 cents, right? 9 cents. And that's the crazy difference with nine cents you're actually still earning 74 cents a day with this miner and that is just like how crazy the impact is of uh, just the electricity bill so there's the latest scoop that's the deal that's the situation in my opinion if you're gonna keep mining it's a no-brainer to push towards solar or just dirt cheap maybe off-site from your home electricity it the miners are cheaper right but Electricity across the world is increasing in price. It, situation is tough, but hey, we push on. We dream of new all-time highs, and uh, I'm not giving up by any means. But I do recognize that this may not be for everyone. This is a loud miner. Uh, you know, it's not something you want in your bedroom. So, hey, let me know your thoughts down in uh, the comments below. Thanks for watching the Voscoin YouTube channel. As always, I seriously appreciate you guys. I'll see you on the next one.